Hey there, it's Dave Carley here, also known as Red Kiwi. Uh, I just thought I'd start a YouTube channel because there was a bunch of things that I was doing at work and in my personal life that were getting a lot of interest from people who wanted to learn more. So I'm going to do a series of videos on that over the next little while. If you like them, please subscribe, like, comment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, please let me know what other topics you'd like me to go into more detail in. Um, looking forward to the journey. Thanks a lot. One of the first topics that I'm going to go through is a product that Microsoft put out a little while ago called Microsoft Teams. And I've been getting a lot of questions from customers on how do we use it? How do we best set it up? What are the best practices? So I wanted to take you through that in just a couple of slides and a, and a demonstration. So these are some of the statistics that we saw in the marketplace that led us to create Microsoft Teams. People were on twice as many teams as they were five years ago. Many of those teams were people inside plus now outside the organization. Many of those teams were very globally distributed and dispersed with different locations, obviously different time zones and different languages. And many of those teams are built up of people of multiple generations. And people in those teams of those generations wanted to collaborate and communicate with each other in different ways, sometimes in person, sometimes mobile, sometimes from home, sometimes in real time, sometimes not. So what we decided to do was we brought out Microsoft Teams, which is really a hub of tools for communication and collaboration. Each team can be highly customizable. It's built on the enterprise security that is inherent in Office 365. So without a further ado, let's go into a demonstration of the product. So Microsoft Teams is part of Office 365. And when you log into Office 365, the web portal, you get to see all the applications that you have available to you. And one of them is Microsoft Teams. So when you click on that, it's gonna log you in to the web version of Microsoft Teams. Teams is available in all of major web browsers, also as an app on the PC or the Mac, and available on all major mobile platforms. What we're going to do though, is switch over to the PC app of Teams, and we're going to create a team. So on the left-hand side here, you can see activity, chat, Teams. So we're gonna click on Teams, add team, and create team. So let's create a team for the sales team within our organization. So we'll call it the sales project team and we'll give it a description. And this is where we can set up whether it can be a public or a private team. Private means that only the team owners of this team can add new members. And public means that anyone in our organization can find the team and join it. In this case, let's just make it private. Now we want to add some members to the team. You can do this later on as well, but here it can be quite easy to just set that up. So let's add Alex. And as you start typing, it's going to look up that name in your active directory or your global address list. So we'll add a couple of other people, click add. And now it gives us the opportunity to define them as either members or owners. Owners are gonna have additional capabilities such as being able to delete the team, being able to set up certain properties on the team, potentially add new people as well. In this case, we'll just set them up as members. So here's our team, sales project team. And then you'll notice just below it is a, a general. This is what we call a channel. So think of a channel as a sub project or project on that team or an initiative or maybe a marketing launch event. And then within each channel, you have a set of communication and collaboration tools that you can use for that team. The ones that come on by default is conversations, files, wikis, and then you can add more as well. And we'll go into that as well as part of the demonstration. So let's start off with a conversation. So this conversation is going to be a post or a message to the entire team, and they can come back and read it at any time, they don't have to be online. So it's it's really sort of like a chat room, if you like, that you can come in and view those conversations at any time. So we're just gonna welcome people to the team. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut over to the web experience, which is Lydia. I'm acting as Megan now. And you'll see that there's some activity 
that showed up for Lydia. So we we'll click on activity. It says Megan has added you to the team sales project team. And I can click on that and I can see that Megan has posted this and then I can reply a message back to her. You can get quite creative with the types of messages. You can add emojis, GIFs, attachments, formatting. We're just going to keep it pretty plain just for the demonstration. Okay. Now the bottom right, you'll see that soon as I posted that as Lydia, Megan got a notification on her PC that someone had replied to her message. She would also get that notification on her phone as well. And if we cut over to the Teams application, and we can see that Lydia had replied with thanks, excited to get started. So the next thing I was going to show you is part of a team, you want a place to store your files that you're going to collaborate on. So next we can go to the Files tab. And this is actually using SharePoint under the hood. So we can add files, folders, we can create new documents that are based on Microsoft Office. You can have workflow associated with documents, retention policies, e-discovery. You get the very rich experience of, of SharePoint under the hood. But in this case, we're just going to upload a marketing document for this new sales project team. Here's our document and we'll upload it. We can click on it and view it. And Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote are built right into Microsoft Teams. So as you can see, I'm actually able to view this PowerPoint without even leaving Microsoft Teams. So what I wanna do is I wanna start a conversation on this document so that we can talk about it uh, and get in alignment. So I can just say start conversation. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add an at mention. So if you're familiar with at mentions on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, it's the ability to draw someone's attention to a particular message. So we're just gonna say, let's use this file to plan for our launch events. And then again, if we switch back to Lydia, here is on her activity feed. I can see that this document, has, as Lydia has been up, updated, Lydia, let's use this file to plan our launch events. And as Lydia, I can say, sounds great. I will get on it right away. And again, at the bottom right, you can see Lydia's response come through to me as Megan. So one of the other things we want to be able to do is add some tools to our team. So we can click on the plus sign and these are tabs that we can add. So we could add an Excel spreadsheet to the tab, which would mean to give us direct access so that we can view it much easily, much more easily. Uh, we can add planner. So let's do that right away. But as you can see, there's lots and lots of different other ones, not just Microsoft ones, but, uh, third party applications as well. So let's add Planner. So Planner is a basic task management capability for Microsoft Teams. If you want something that's a little bit more advanced, you can use something like Microsoft Project Online. In this case, we're just gonna use Planner to plan out our marketing launch. Now we wanna add a task. So let's put in a task name. Let's set the due date to be middle of next week. And let's assign that task to Lydia. Let's add that task. And we can drill into that task and get access to some more information. We can assign it to a particular bucket. Let's set the progress because we know that Lydia has just started working on that and we want to track it. So that's now in progress. Another really popular tool that a lot of people add to a team is Microsoft OneNote. So let's use this for meetings, which is quite popular. You can post the creation of that tool to the channel so that other people find out about it. We won't in this case. And now it fires up Microsoft OneNote right in the Microsoft team. So let's say that we had a meeting. So let's say kickoff meeting. Uh, 
and then we have the full power of Microsoft OneNote. So we can insert a table, a picture, attachments, etc. So we will do a table. And then we can even draw within it. So let's say this is going to be the, the marketing event. This can be the, the stage. And we can have the tables located here, for example. So really rich OneNote experience right in your team experience, which is very powerful. There are many, many ways for you to be able to customize and extend uh, Microsoft Teams. If you go to a tab and click the More Options button, there's an option for connectors. So connectors are a way for you to bring in external information into your team to really enrich the data that the team has access to to be able to collaborate. As you can see, the list is very long. It's, ex it's being expanded every week. Uh, we've got third parties such as Twitter, uh, Wonderlist, GitHub, Facebook pages, etc. MailChimp. Uh, recently, we added SAP capabilities as well. So there are a lot of information that you can start to bring into your team to really enrich that experience. The other thing you might want to be able to do is have some collaboration in real time with some of your team members. So here is the chat capability. So what I can do is create a new chat. And this time I'm going to chat with Alex and Lydia. And if there's been any other communications with those people in the past, it will show up here. And as you can see, I've asked them a couple of questions and they've got back to me. And so I can just type a message in here. And then if I go over to Lydia's experience and to her chat menu, I can see Megan's post here and I can reply to that. And at the bottom right, you'll see Lydia's comment come through as a notification on my PC. And as I said, it would come through on my phone as well. The other thing we've incorporated into Microsoft Teams is meetings. So if I click on the meetings tab, I can see a series of meetings in my calendar that have been scheduled. And I can schedule a new meeting. So let's create a meeting title, launch event kickoff. It's going to be a Microsoft Teams meeting. We can set a start date. So let's set it for uh, Monday at 9 o'clock till 10. And let's add some people to the team. And down here, it's actually going to help me determine when these people are free. So here's the schedule assistant. So under the schedule assistant, I can see when everyone is going to be free. So let's do 11 till 12. As we can see, everybody's free at that time. And let's go ahead and schedule the meeting. So when it comes to joining that meeting, I can click on that launch event in my meetings experience, or I can do this in Outlook as well, and I can say join. In this case, I'm trying to join a meeting that's ahead of time, but we'll just join anyway, just so we can demonstrate the capabilities. So here is the meeting experience. We've got people who are joining the meeting, down here we've got our meeting controls so we could do we could add video this is your audio controls your microphone controls we could share our desktop etc so you get a full web meeting experience right in microsoft teams in this case we'll just hang up now that you're storing your files your conversations 
information about your team, what you want to be able to do is find it very easily. So you can go to the search button, search bar at the top, and let's search for launch. And this is going to show us conversations. Here's the document that we uploaded. Very quick search across your entire team. So it'd be very easy to find information when you need it. So that was just a quick demonstration of Microsoft Teams. We went through how to create a team, channels, conversations, files, adding new tabs, having chats and initiating and joining meetings within Microsoft Teams, being able to find the content. It's kind of just skimming the surface, but gives you a good overview of Microsoft Teams. What I want to go into next is just a few scenarios of where we're seeing customers using Microsoft Teams that might give you some ideas. Here's some examples of where some companies are using Microsoft Teams in sales, marketing, project management, engineering, customer support, for example, to give you some ideas. So a lot of people ask me, how do I get started? So I think my advice would be download Microsoft Teams, the app for your PC or Mac, pick a project that you're working on it together as a team and do 100% of that teamwork in Microsoft Teams. Store your files there, have your conversations there, set up or download the app on your phone so that you're getting those notifications on the go, have your meetings within Microsoft Teams, give it a go and see how it helps accelerate the collaboration and communication around that team. There's some other great resources. Uh, at successwithteams.com. If you want me to go into any other details of the product, and there's things like bots, you know, the administration side of it, how to set that up, please let me know in the comments and I'll do some further videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time in the next video.